English or Afghan but English, born in England. So I didn't grow up around this Afghan community of all these great people and have all these friends. So as I said with the song earlier, the Afghan thing, and like Zora, that was an amazing poem. Um, that thing didn't really uh, get me. It's just more just about existence and being human and, and so on. Let's read from a few of them. Okay. I see through your Japanese and Scandinavian. You are no different from me in your recesses. No different from an emotional Greek or a Turk or a crazy Czech. No different. As the camera pierces your pale flesh and zooms in towards your heart, I see there the same fleshy pounder, the same screaming giant, scared stiff and weeping so unashamedly. Knowing you're not accustomed to looking that deep within yourself, he weeps freely and loudly. Knowing you can't hear, he thumps like baby wailing with so much insistence, with a full and complete understanding of the injustice inherent in life, thumps, pounds, to be acknowledged. With every pound there is a salty tear being pumped through your blinded blood, and all the while you walk through the pearly world silent and obedient to the number games, nodding and taking notes on the minor details of the body talkers who sing the narrow seminar songs, all the while sleeping and waking the years away in utter sleep. Uh, so that was a bit of a heavier book, and this, they all have themes. This one is a bit of a crazy book. Uh, this is a nice one. A completely uneventful day, it's called, and then in brackets, Fajr is a reward. Fajr is the prayer, the dawn prayer. Okay, Afghans will know about that, maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. And then what's he now? Uh, yeah, the ones, like, you know, this was the time when I was just praying, I guess, in the morning sometimes, which, you know, on and off my whole life I try and do it, and usually I fail. Uh, but often I succeed, and that's a great feeling, getting up and having a victory early in the morning and looking at the sun. Right. <laughs> Hit a chord. Okay. Oh dear Lord, I am excited. Present on this day of marching, rolling, thrilling news. A day which started with discipline and dawn is concluding with deliverance and euphoria. I'm so thrilled to be a part of this world, to take place in the street scenes for fleeting moments, to make smiling eye contact with shaking old men and give my seat up for all flavors of wonderful women and hitch a ride on the piggyback of any child at play. I couldn't be happier to be swinging low under the daytime half moon, uh, to be tripping across the arc eternally, rainbow snowing and skiing through the supple and willing air, interceding and confronting every single atom. I don't know what the silent explosion of future holds in her secretive gathering arms. I see only the vague reflections of light shimmering up onto her body. I can't imagine the taste either, but despite that, I keep on biting and licking the oxygen all around me as if this life were unreal and dreams made more sense. Can't stop myself. Uh, this is something, okay, another one, okay. I'm picking randomly here, isn't this fun like that? Because you don't know what you're going to get, kind of thing. Um, okay. Drop a piece of paper there. <laughs> this is a really long short story about the time I saw Donald Rumsfeld in DC, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> he was walking, he had a sling, and it was very weird. He walked towards me. Strange feeling. Poets, we could write a whole poem about that. <laughs> Listen in the street and seeing Donald Rumsfeld as a poem. Okay. Here's a nice poem. This one's nice. Where is the son of you? The giving child who runs in you. Who doesn't know or care where to. And doesn't try so hard for why. Where is the bird of you? The absolute absurd of you. The squawking joy box turning view that slips in water's affirming hue. Where is the dance in you, the cerulean bluish France in you? The mountain hiking chance in you, who does for dreams, not what is due? And where are them games in you, them stuffed up number games in you, the chains in you, the factory folded flames in you that burn up all that bursted love? And where is the dove of you, the only living love in you? The winged spirit, solitude, that speak to him like the lover do. That was in 
sincere for us, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you're all sincere, but there was that was special. You did a little spin first. Well, I spin because I wanted to see these guys. Handsome, lovely people. Okay, last book, okay, and this is a nice one. In fact, I'll read the first one. This is called The Beautiful. I was walking, I was, uh, you know, a lot of these are written in some in England, some in DC when I moved to DC. And the one that hasn't been released yet is the New York stuff, so you can check that. These are on Amazon, by the way, and I'm selling them here today. If you want to buy them, well, you can buy them. I have one of those iPod things where you can take credit cards, so credit, cash, whatever you want, okay? <laughs> you check to cash the check. There's one of the places around the corner, instant check cash or whatever. I could just go and I would actually leave the reading if you gave me money and I'd run. <laughs> cash it, because <laughs> you know, I'm making my living from this right now. This is called The Beautiful. Look! Look at all of these people. They are full of sweet beauty. None of them know, as they glide on autopilot, which is another way to say, live with instinct, soulfully. As these years and fives and decades fall off our shoulders and our bellies expand and knowledge deepens and movements turn us and tumult teaches us to keep rising and swerving and coasting, glittering across like the Pacific, priceless on a sunset soundless. Awake in this dream where abstract clouds calmly keep us, where birds secretly make love in the public and give voice to the current of joy which slices through us in a day. Dot, 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 purple and palaces, says the starling bird in approximate translation. Star, star, chandelier and bread on the wind, 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 wind. Awake in this dream of slow cars in the city, shaking cups of polystyrene, filled with pieces of silvered humanness, transacted endlessly until they find their one true home. In finding their way, they are touched by the trembling, unsure digits, the tools of a tree-like people who, uh, who, who speak one true language and yet constantly act as if they cannot understand one another, cannot read eyes or intentions, and need translators with turtle tongues. Turtle tongues, I said. They're a good species. They're a good species. Clean and caring. Made mostly of water and forgiveness. Only a very small portion of them truly swim in flames. The rest are badly disguised dancers. That's it. Thank you.